morning. Glory, hallelujah. This is another day that the Lord has made. And you ought to rejoice in it this morning. He woke you up early this morning. You may not have been 100%, but we hope that you're in your right mind. Everything may not have been all right, but keep praying. Keep seeking and trusting in the Lord. When you leave here today, I guarantee you everything will be better. Why I know that? Because Jesus lives. He lives deep in your heart and soul. And the Bible says if you just seek, ask, the door will be open. That's why I know we serve a mighty good God. I don't know what's going on in your life, but one thing I know, that he died on camera, that we may have a right to the tree of life. So we greet you this morning from the Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church. We greet you and want you to know that everything is in God's control. Our pastor, Reverend w, Benny W. Henry, and we're just glad that you're viewing in on us and streaming in. And we want you to get a word of encouragement. We need to learn to encourage one another because we're all on the same road. All of us are going through one thing or another. But this morning, give him praise this morning. Give him praise for not only for what he's done for you, but what he's going to do for you and what he's doing for you right now. Somebody didn't get up this morning. Bible said he called and they answered. Whether they were ready or not, but who's to judge that but Almighty God? So we want you to join in and praise his holy name with us. Be blessed by the word. God bless you and God keep you. Let's stand and sing, yes, we are glad. Yeah.
Our scripture reading this morning be a very familiar one. We're going to do the 23rd number of Psalm. And it reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, staff they comfort me. Thou prepares a place, a table for me, before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I read to you the 23rd number of Psalms in its entirety. May the Lord have blessed the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Let's bow head. Heavenly Father, once again, we come to you with humble heart. Thank you once again, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to come out to your house of worship. We thank you for watching over us last night, Heavenly Father. We thank you for waking us this, this morning with a reasonable portion of heaven's strength. We thank you for traveling grace, Heavenly Father, as we travel the lonely, lonely highways and city streets, country roads. We just thank you for taking the wheel, Heavenly Father, and allowing us to make it safely. Heavenly Father, we pray for that same traveling grace for the ones that are still traveling. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the man that's going to bring your word this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our pastor. We ask that you continue to bless him, Heavenly Father, as he continues to do your will. We thank you for the men that stand beside him in the pulpit, Heavenly Father. We ask that you continue to bless our deacon board and every auxiliary of this church. We ask that you bless every member of this church, Heavenly Father. From the youngest to the elders, Heavenly Father, we ask the special blessing that you continue to watch over our children, college students, and young adults, Heavenly Father. We ask that you keep them safe, Heavenly Father. Now, Heavenly Father, we ask that you just continue to bless every one of us, Heavenly Father. We ask that you can continue to give us traveling grace as we travel up and down the highways this week, Father. We thank you for blessing us on last week. Now, Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to wash our heart, continue to bridle our tongue, to continue to, to guide our footsteps, Heavenly Father, that we may walk in the way that you have us to go. For these prayers and blessings, we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just to carry you through. It makes no difference what the world may do. Say I do.
Time anyway, put your trust in Jesus, and everything put your trust in Jesus, stay right there. Trust in Jesus, trust in Jesus. He's a lawyer that never lost a case. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. God is able. God is able. God is able. Just to carry. on your mind. He's able. He's able. He's able. Have you tried him? Have you tried him? One witness. Just one witness. You know that he's able. He's able. He's able.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Have you tried him? He's able to carry you through. I have a few announcements here. I'm going to read them just like I got them because one I'm not understanding. But anyway, Pastor Ante Jeter and church family invite you to join us for the pastor's appreciation 11 year celebration October 27 2023 at 2 p.m. the guest speaker will be Pastor L. Chris Johnson a New Hope Missionary Baptist Church in Ratcliffe Kentucky he'll be the guest speaker Mount Galilee Missionary Baptist Church in Northport Alabama Reverend Jesse L. Miller Pastor, it's uh, dear Pastor. Well, just say congratulate. You are invited to share with us in our pastoral 46th anniversary to be held on Sunday, September 24, 2023, at 3 p.m. So the guest speaker will be Reverend Jerry Says, Pastor of Greater Shiloh Baptist Church, Jasper, Alabama. And we have um, Tabernacle, CME Church, Ethelsville, Alabama, where Reverend Richard A. McKay, pastor, you are cordially invited to our annual Missionary Day program, October 1st, 2023, at 2.30 p.m. Reverend L. Andrew Gardner of New Baptist Temple Church and church family will be our guest on this day. Dinner will be served from 1 p.m. to 2.15. I got the easy things out the way. Now let's work on the most important thing. Our prayer list, sick and shut in, and bereavement list. On our prayer list, we have Pastor Benny Henry, Bernetta Davis, Wise Alfred, Josephine Walsh, Reverend James Henry, Skylar Bell, Clara Scott, Broderick Scott, Pamela Hill, Lisa Henry, Patricia Tuggle and her father, uh, Janet Robinson, Annie Mosley, Sister Luella McGowan, Sister Shirley Hodges, and Keandre Dumas, Miles family, for prayer. Seeking shut in, we have Renetta Smith, Renata. Renata Smith, okay, L.S. Johnson, both hospitalized, and Hazel Weston, bereavement. We have Peter Pan Piper family, the Weatherspoon family, and the Harris family. Let us keep those in mind as we go before the Lord in prayer, because there are many others out there that are sick, shut in, and families that are bereaved today. So let us go before the Lord in prayer. Just be mindful that you're blessed to be here today. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you today. Thank you for allowing us to see another sunrise. Father, because so many didn't see the sunrise. They went to bed last night anticipating to get up and do certain things today, but you saw fit to bring them home. So, Father, some are out there on their bed of affliction right now. Some woke up and couldn't see, eyesight gone. Some woke up and couldn't move. Father, but they woke up. Father, we want you to just shower your blessings down on your people today. For those who are less fortunate than we are, we thank you for allowing us to be able to come to the house of prayer one more time. Because you didn't have to do it. As we came down the dangerous highways and byways, Father, you protected us from all hurt, harm, or danger, incidents, accidents, and allow us to arrive here safe and sound. And we pray that you will do the same on our return trip. Father, we just thank you for all that you've done for us. You bless those who are sick, those who are, are just not able to sometimes raise their heads 
Father, let the altar come to them wherever they pray. Sometimes they can't kneel. They may not be able to even raise a hand, Father, but let your altar be there for them to receive the words of comfort. Because, Father, we pray for you because you prayed for us. You loved us because we've... Father, we don't even know how to pray as we are. But we know that you first loved us. So we can't help but love you. So, Father, come into our life with the light spirit that others may see the good works in us. That maybe somebody that don't read the Bible, read us and ask, come running, want to know what must I do to be saved? Father, because we know that you're able to do all things but fail. Father, we want you to just bless every church that's open in your name today. Bless the hungry, the homeless, the still suffering, the alcoholic, the addict, those who just can't see tomorrow, Father. But show them that your light still shines because you God and you God all by yourself. And without you, they can do nothing. Father, we want you to bless the offerings that have been rendered for the uplifting and building of your kingdom. Father, we let all this, all these things be accepted in your sight. And in Jesus' name we do pray and we say amen, amen, and amen.
Good morning, Mount Olive. And good morning to you out in television land. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. And I feel blessed. God woke me up this morning. And there's many that didn't rise when the alarm clock went off. But we feel blessed to be in the house of the Lord. We come to praise God and to just enjoy his presence in our lives. Yes, to our pastor, Pastor Henry, to the minister on the ministerial staff, to our deacons, mothers of the church, to our officers, our church family, and to you that are tuning in this morning. It's good to know that God still loves us. And he loves us with an everlasting love. It's, it's not like the world loves you. The love will work, uh, love you if you do something good. But God loves us in spite of ourselves. Oh, yeah. We have done nothing good. Oh, yeah. We've d- done nothing to make God want to love us. God loves us anyhow. Amen. He loves us because we are made in his likeness and made in his image. Yes, and so he loves us. Let us go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to stand before your people and proclaim your undying love for for the world. Bless us today. Open our hearts and our minds that we may receive the word of God and not just receive it, Lord, and forget it, but go out into the world and tell others about God's love. Because the word tells us that you love us so much that you died, that we may have life. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning from the book of John, the third chapter, the 16th verse. We are very familiar with the most familiarized verse of scripture it is in the Bible. And John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. You may be seated. I want to talk to you this morning about God is love. God is love. We have lived in a world where it seems that love has packed up his bags and just walked away. Every man for himself, but God for us all. But God created human beings in his own image. And in human beings, he, in, in, in his image, he created them, both male and female. That's found in the book of Genesis. Genesis 1 and 27. When God put man on this earth, God gave man a free will to act. He didn't put us here as robots. He gave us a mind. And he gave us a will. And God put us here to choose him. But we have found so many false gods, so many things that we have have turned to except our created God that put us on this earth. The Bible tells us in 1 John 3 and 2, says, Dear friends, we are already God's children, and he has shown us what we will be when Christ appears. But we know that when we are with him, we shall see him as he really is. And the Bible said we shall be just like him. Uh-huh. You know, it's a, it's, it's, 
it's so strange that most people on this earth have never read the Bible in their lives. They have no idea of what a godly life is like. On our way to church this morning, we saw a man out mowing his lawn. He had six days to get that done, but his Sunday morning didn't mean anything to him. And not only him, but there are many at, that's at home today waiting for the football game to come on this afternoon. There are many who don't know Christ as their Lord and Savior. But I want to let you know that God knows us. He knows our thoughts. He knows what we're going to think even before we thank him. And he, he, he didn't just find that out. God knew us before he created the world. God knew what we were going to be like. Deuteronomy tells us to understand, therefore, that the Lord, your God, is indeed God. And he is a faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavish his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commandments. And in Gal Galatians 2 and 20, that my old self have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. God loves us. Our problem is we can't accept that love and share it with other people. We are selfish and self-centered and think only about ourselves. But God loves us so much until he gave us a his son to die on the cross, I don't care, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. And we are selfish and self-centered, and we walk by people who are struggling in this world and never say a word. We could even, we can just tell folks, sometimes just tell somebody, I love you, can make all the difference in the world. I remember when we was have, having a class at church one day, and this lady was in our class, and she said when she was married, her husband used to beat her quite a bit. And they had two children. And she said when those little children, two little boys, Say when each one of them, as they was growing up, they would come and want to sit in her lap and want her just to hold them. And, and so she could not stand those other boys because of the way her husband had treated her. And she said, I'm here today to say I'm sorry for what I did because both of those boys are in jail today. That's why we have so much crime in our lives, in our world have so much violence, so much ugly stuff that's going on in our world because there is no love being shared with the people of God who God loves so much that he died for us and we can't share that love with others. We walk about around struggling people every day and never have a kind word to say. Well, God is love. <laughs> and if we're going to see God, we better get that love in our hearts also. We are here because God wanted us here. The most important day of your life was the day that you were born. And the next most important day in your life is the day that you discovered why you were born. God wants us to know why we are here. And he wanted us to know that so much until he sent his son into the world to show us how a godly person ought to live. When you discover your life's purpose, you can dedicate your whole life to fulfilling that purpose. 
And let me tell you, when you are doing what God put you here on this earth to do, the blessings just never stop rolling. God keep on blessing you. A child of God and the will of God uh, is immortal until God is finished with you. Don't just go through life wondering my, where am I here and going from place to place and trying different things. Ask God. He's the one that put you here. It wasn't because of your mother and your father. God used them to put you on this earth, and he has given you everything that you need to be successful. In Luke 15, Jesus tells the parable about a man who had a hundred sheep, and one of those sheep got lost. And he left the ninety and nine and going out and looked for that one lost sheep. And when he found him, he said he put him on his shoulder and brought him back to the fold. There, there are many lost people in this world today. We got a world that's over 7 billion folks in this world. And only a few of them know the way. But you know why the world is the way it's in? Because the people of God is not doing what God has put us here to do. Our mission is to go out into the world and tell sinners about the love of God. And that they too can have life eternal. We are here to do God's bidding, not man's bidding. The Bible says when they, he brought that one lost sheep back, that there's more, that everybody rejoiced with this man. He said, I say, you are like the wise man that when more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents, than a 99 person who needs no repentance. God rejoices when a person gives his or her life to God. Now God so loved the world that he gave us the best thing that he had. God is not just loving. The Bible tells us that God is love. John 1, 1 John 4 and 8 says, He does not love us. He does, he does not love he who does not love God doesn't, does not know the love of God. For God loves us. And God is love and he has decided. And he who abides in the love abides in God. God is in him. There are many false religions in this world who claim to love God. But God is only proven true love. A man may love his mistress, he may love his family, he may love his children, but he is not truly the love the way that God loves us. It's wonderful to know that the Creator is a God is the Creator of the world, and He's all powerful, all knowing, and all present. He's infinite, and He's eternal. And just as God loves you. He loves me and he loves the whole world. We must remember that all of God's attributes are important. He loves us so much that he gives us what we need, when we need it, and how much we need it. Even when God displays his wrath, he still loves us. So what does it mean when you hear that God is love? It tells us something about his nature, the essence of God. It's not merely that he loves, it's that he is love. Everything he does is rooted and motivated by love. And he made the world because he is love. And he conformed, he, he formed man because of his love. He rules the universe in love. In other words, John is reminding us that when we think of God, and the world he created, we should never forget about the love of God. Just as many people are confused about who God is, they are also confused about what love is. Bodless familiar question. Everyone talks love. Everyone experiences some form of it. And everyone is driven by the need to give and receive it 
but the false idea of love are tearing this world apart. Why does this happen? Christian philosopher Peter Creep point out that the world is filled with counterfeit love and false religions. Right. Kindness is often mistaken for love. And some people don't discipline their children because they are afraid that the child, this the child may think that you don't love me. But the opposite is true. The Bible tells us to train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he, will, he, may, he won't depart from it. And training up a child, sometimes you have to discipline them. You have to, you have to spare the, you're not spare the rod and spoil the child. You have to put them on. Let them know that that is not acceptable a way to live. Love him. Love your fellow man. God created us to be loving creatures on this earth. But man has decided that he wants to go his own separate way. And he has gone by the way of death and not by the way of love. When we are dealing with the subject of love, we, we must go to the Bible. Because the Bible must be the guide for everything that we do. But especially on this subject of love. Because we first must begin to understand that we must have godly love. And some of the most mean-spirited that you will find, people that you will find in the world, are folks in the church that claim to be godly folks. As Christians, we can't just say that we are godly. We must demonstrate it by our attitude, by our actions, by our conversation, and about everything we do. (laughs) 